fade this out. Welcome, guys. We're watching the uh, PC show. I got an ad, so that's great. Here we go. All new gameplay footage. I don't really know what to expect with this interviews. one, y'all. Um, I don't think today. I streamed this last year. First gameplay footage did I? For Vampire the Masquerade. I don't think Blood I did. Lines two. Borderlands 3. We're going to get an in-depth look at all the these games coming up, though. Genius 2. Starmancer. Last Oasis. Two new games from Coffee Stain Studios. Griftlands. Planet Zoo. What's Planet next Zoo? Is that Zoo Tycoon? Remnant from the Ashes. Mosaic. Warframe. Baldur's Gate 3. Are we gonna get to like Shenmue look at the footage three. for that? The reveal of unexplored two. Shenmue looks great. Age of Wonders, Planetfall, and more. And now your PC gaming show hosts, Day Nine and Frankie Ward. Nice. Can I get this off the screen, please? Good morning. Good Hello. morning. Yes. The PC gaming show, y'all. I've never streamed this, so we'll do this for the first time together. The PC gaming show. Wow, that was very yeah. loud to keep your mic out yes. of my ears. We're so happy you're here today. We have a He's great very show for you lined up. We got 30 games that we're going to be showing off. 30. Some of them will be updates to existing Look at her little pantsuit. It's so Others cute. Others will be exclusive world first looks. Y'all ready? Well, I first want to thank our sponsors for helping make this event possible. Without their support, this event would not happen each year. So thank you so much. Thanks to you for coming out. It's 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. Happy Monday, everyone. Best day of the week. Hello to all of you Ugh. up in the balcony. And of course, thanks Black to tack. you tuning in live from all over the internet, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're tuning in from, welcome. We're happy to have you. My name is Day9. I'm one of your hosts for this event. Joining me is the fantastic Frankie Ward. Hello. Thank you, Sean. Hello, everyone. Oh, she's got now, the accent, of for course. For you guys at home, for the first time, whatever platform you're watching on, we are going to be pulling your clever comments. Just, just remember that I said clever comments from Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook throughout the show, making you famous on the internet, on the screen. We're going to be sharing them live. And one of the things we're especially looking for are your questions for the Borderlands 3 team, because, Sean, you've got a mission to put their questions to the developers later. That's right. Midway through this show, I'm going to be asking those questions to the creative director of Borderlands 3. Use hashtag PC Gaming Show, and we'll read them live. Until then, cool. let's start the PC Gaming Show with our very first title from UK developer Rebellion. Several years ago, they announced that they were working on the follow-up to Evil Genius, a real-time evil layer simulation. She's got to stand in those shoes. Oh, Rebellion nah, dude. is ready to reveal its nefarious vision for the project. So, PC Gaming Show... Who's ready to stroke a cat menacingly? Here it is, the world is blue to reveal for Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Anybody play Evil Genius 1? <laughs> hey guys, welcome in. It's 2 a.m. in Japan, oh my god, go to bed! Go to bed! You gotta get up in time for Ubisoft and uh, Square Enix. Or maybe just Ubisoft. <laughs> Why do I get Incredibles feels off of this? So builder to class, I'm assuming, and then like defense, security. I have no idea about this game. Rip. So it's like a top down game? Is it a top down game? 
Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is the successor to one of the most beloved RPGs ever. And with me to talk about it, I have Brian Mitsoda and Kara Ellison from Parachute Lab. Now, Brian, you were a writer on the very first game, so what does it mean for this you guy with his gloves. to finally get to work on the sequel? Um, it means that uh, a lot of people have uh, very high expectations and we have to meet those. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's take a look at whether you are going to meet them because we are going to take a look at the world's first gameplay footage. Solace, what's up, dude? I guess I have to be the one to tell you. Dude. Uh... You're dead. World of darkness? You're obviously new to this whole existence, but truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. We have one rule. You don't break the masquerade. The mouth sinking is rough, but it's whatever. It's another creepy game. This city. We're all fighting over scraps here. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your death. Having fun yet? Vampire. Vampire of the Masquerade. Hey, Sweden, there you go. Bloodlines 2. There you go, Sweden. There's your game. Found you a game. Coming quarter 2020. Yo, that's cool. Guys, Straw, 10 10 shirts, freaking laser beams attached to their freaking world. heads. Uh, so in uh, the Emperor the. Sounds uh, like you play WoW. What, what it is, it's, it's kind of a dark oh, wait, version dolphins, of our isn't world. It? I knew and that. the vampires kind of uh, <laughs> need to keep Hi, their Straw. presence secret from humanity. He's team so runs, dude. The vampires are kind of. Uh, staying hidden in the shadows while also needing to feed on human beings and kind of manipulating us uh, in order to get blood. We're talking about feeding on human beings. I'm getting flashbacks to last year's show. Kara, it's not just a case, though, of, of sucking blood and filling up your health meter, is it? Actually, different types of blood do different things. That's right. So we have oh, a uh, resonance system, which means that essentially vampires uh, can kind of like, like uh, see the emotional resonance of human beings. Uh, like that's creepy what hi alana and then they can uh they can feed on those people to like feel the same things as human beings do to feel more kind of alive alana i love and you and that can give you like extra boost in the game and there were some really interesting characters in that trailer as well what kind of relationships are we going to be forming with them as the player well very uh fragile very volatile relationships very mature game developers wear leather jackets too so it's going to be a fun time <laughs> and one thing that was really a lot of people are dressing a lot better this year. The black is very classy. You don't just get bitten and turn into Nosferatu, Dracula, or Brad Pitt. And to be honest, yeah. I think you should maybe put Brad Pitt into the game because then I'm definitely playing it. You actually have to adjust to your environment to becoming a vampire, Zara. That's right. So essentially, in the game, uh, when you were made as a vampire, a uh, sort, of, uh, sort of very young vampire, a lot of other vampires are made at the same time. Um, in this thing called the mass embrace. And that means that um, essentially uh, they're having a less lucky time than you in the world. You're having a relatively good time compared to them because they don't know what they're doing. They're going through vampire puberty uh, yeah. on their own. And you know, you might have a family, you might have say a, a wife and children and you are morally objecting to drinking blood uh, to survive. And so you might have a less good time, let's say, than the player is having. So you can find them throughout the world as well. And Brian, the first game came out in 2004. Creepy. You've been waiting 15 years for this. Any pressure? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, 2004. <laughs> That's but, crazy. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to make it work. Well, you know what? I think there are people around the world watching this, and of course, the audience here, and they all can't wait to play this game. Can you wait, guys? <laughs> there you go. So I think you've convinced everyone here now. When are we going to be able to play the game? Uh, we're going uh, Q1 uh, next year. Fantastic. And when can we learn more? Bloodlines2.com. Thank you so much, Brian and Cara. Good luck. Give it up, guys. You're on a wild break. You're playing Final Fantasy right now? Nice. nice. Hey, Kelby. Who wanted to play Dwarf Fortress hey, in space? Starmancer is a space station sim from Omenux Games and Shufflefish. After a catastrophe on Earth, humanity has launched a desperate attempt to find refuge among the stars. 
Your task is to manage a colony she has to read of sustaining life through the lights components with those fake eyelashes on. That's tough. But when you're living in space, there can be big consequences for even the smallest mistakes. Let's take a look at the brand new gameplay for Star Master. She's got dimples like down the side of her mouth. That's kind of cool. Hey, Kelby. No, I think it was just E3, you know. Just E3. You don't like suit lady stage energy? Aw. Uh, I like her suit. It's really cute. Grow your colony. <clears throat> Excuse me. Build an expander. Customize. Preserve life. I'm just tired of top downs and side scrollers. Make friends. And enemies. Uh oh. Uh oh. Warning. 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 Start Mancer. It's a chill game. You know, it's a chill game you play. Both when you're not wanting to be like modders. super stressed. And now they each independently run their own studio. That's Let's awesome. welcome to the stage from Tripwire, John Gibson, and from Torn Banner, Steve Piggott. Hey, Sean. <laughs> now I understand. Both of you started as modders, working independently, and running your own studios. What, talk to me about the collaboration that you started together. Yeah, Steve, so uh, we've known the Torn Banner guys for a long time, uh, even giving them some advice when they were modders going commercial, helping them not make the mistakes that we made. <laughs> and uh, we've been friends, and we've always wanted to work together. And now Aww. we've sort of formed this That's independent awesome, dude. former mod team, professional it's American super dream, right? to <laughs> get an awesome game out to fans. Yeah, and for us, this is a dream partnership as well. Um, we've always been really close with Tripwire, and we really respect their games. Um, we see them as one of the few studios that's bringing true innovation to the FPS genre, and that's what we're all about as well. Well, let's take a look at this upcoming collaboration between Torn Banner and Tripwire. Cool drum intro. Oh, whoa. Is this just a trailer? Is this a. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't. Um... Is this the game that everybody's been playing? Or is this basically looking just like it? That was the variant scream, I swear to God. It's not. Is it? Oh, Chivalry? It looks just like the other one that came out. It is chivalry. Wow, it looks like, yeah, Mor Mordhau, how do you say that? Mordho, Mordho, Mordho. Mordhaus. <laughs> that was dark. Oh, talk to me about chivalry too, Steve. <laughs> Well, Chivalry 2 is, is about bringing players into their favorite medieval movie battle scene. And our, our flagship game mode, Team Objective, does that by having players complete medieval objectives <laughs> like sieging castles, raiding villages, and, uh, and yeah, you're really, you're not just going and standing in an area and then a bar fills up. You're, like you said, burning houses, killing peasants, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Playing as peasants, getting killed. It's really about letting the player experience every iconic moment of the era. And on top of that, we've, we've this time around, we've increased the player count scale to about two and a half times what the previous game yeah. was, to 64 players. And on top of that increased scale, we've added horses, which really allows us to add a lot of drama to the game and bring experiences like 
the Battle of the Bastards from, from Game of Thrones. Don't worry, we'll ignore the last season. Just Battle of the Bastards is gonna be in the game. Yeah. All right, so I wanna ask <laughs> about the swordplay element to Chivalry 2. I mean, I know it's a really critical element. Yeah, and this time around, we've completely revamped. I mean, we really view our, what we're doing here as bringing a true sequel in every sense. Yeah. We've attempted to completely revamp the combat, movement, and animation systems mm -hmm. so that every swing, every, every action of the combat feels readable and fair and also has the satisfaction of the, and the weight that you would expect when two medieval knights in full armor are clashing. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's very, very fluid and much more accessible than the previous game. And it's, you know, the, the, the It's cool they're getting so to work together because they're friends, really you know? When, when I'm playing it. Yeah, and I wanted to ask about the fluidity because in a lot of melee combat games, you hit a bye button Matt, and there's a full animation swing and then you sort of reset. So it's kind of these discrete, chunky times. I understand that in Chivalry 2, the sword play operates differently than that. Yeah, we kind of think of it like when you're swimming, where you're kind of constantly using both arms at the same time. And yeah. a, a core part of our focus this time around has been making it so that players can fight multiple opponents at the same time. Like one oh, on three, cool. one on four situations? Exactly, because that's fundamentally part of the, the becoming the ultimate warrior fantasy right. and uh, achieving glory on the battlefield. Well, I mean, I do have to ask, because we're talking about sword play and mastery, but the original chivalry, is, I mean, it's kind of like silly fun. Like, how do you balance the mastery with the fun element? Yeah, our goal has always been to make it so that players can take the game as seriously as they want to and also as silly as they want to. Um, we know that probably about half our audience plays the game drunk. Uh, and we <laughs> love that. Um, <laughs> at least half. Yeah, <laughs> that's an important metric to track. And the game has a huge influence from Monty Python as well. I mean, in the over-the-top voiceovers and the role-playing opportunities. Just a flesh wound. I mean, the game is genuinely hilarious. As an example, you can beat a man with He's a chicken lying. while quoting Shakespeare. Like, so, like, picking up a chicken as a yeah, weapon. Yeah, physically a clubbing him to death. With well, that's chicken. excellent. Well, I mean, I have to ask. Excellent. When can people get their hands on Chivalry 2? So Chivalry 2 is coming out That's great. Uh, early 2020, and it's coming uh, first to the Epic Games Store. Oh, look forward to checking it out in early 2020. Gentlemen, John Gibson and Steve Piggott. Epic Games, that's Thank another name so for them. We are just getting started here at the PC Gaming Show. Let's take a look at what's coming up next. This poor guy's sweating in that suit. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. That's the dream to club people. I think, uh, Alon, did you ask? Yeah, we will be streaming the Nintendo Direct. The world for of course. wildlife in Planet Zoo. Planet Zoo? From the creators of Darksiders, Remnant from the Ashes, Baldur's Gate 3, and more trailers, interviews, and gameplay footage. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. He was reluctant. You can hear a little hesitation. Yeah, for real. like one of those metaphorical games. Coming 2019. I mean, it is 2019. That was a brand new trailer for Mosaic, a dark and atmospheric adventure game coming later this year from developer Killbyte. Did they advertise a game within a game? How are you guys enjoying it so far? There's been some stores, some space stations, vampire puberty, we're listening to your reactions to the PC Gaming Show throughout the entire broadcast, no matter what platform you're watching and ranting on, so keep them coming. Our next game is She's a ghost hair. multiplayer hide-and-seek game inspired by a popular mod. Charge up your proton packs and get ready for Midnight Ghost Hunt. When the night falls, yeah, they mentioned vampire puberty earlier, so she was quoting it again. There's only you and me. When the night falls, you can count on me. Darling, if you only I'm 
man. Do you have to find what items haunted or whatever? It'll make you feel brand new. This is totally so not Ghostbusters. Oh my god. <laughs> and you get to be the ghost too. Oh my god, dude. Oh, this is funny. I want to play that extreme prop hunt a little bit, yeah. What the heck? Dude. Joining me on the stage to talk about Midnight Ghost Hunt is the dynamic one-man team. Creative director, programmer, designer, it's Sam Malone! Thank you for having me. <laughs> Sam. I think they were late to walk out. That's what that tell happened. Please us what is going on in that. What is Midnight Ghost Hunt Hi, Rich. all about? So, Midnight Ghost Hunt is a multiplayer ghost hunting hide and seek game. Uh, you can play as either as ghosts or ghost hunters, like a 4v4 format. I see. Uh, the ghosts can hide inside average everyday objects around the haunted house. Uh, their goal is to look like harmless furniture, uh, but on the inside, they're not so harmless ghosts as you saw. Yeah, and if I'm understanding correctly, it's not about hiding as a lamp to try to assault and take out a hunter. It's actually, you would do that so that way you can keep running away and continue to hide. Exactly, so the main objective of the ghosts is to try to stay hidden as long as they can until the time runs out, until the clock strikes midnight. Midnight being kind of gotcha. the uh, hour oh, of the yeah. ghosts, basically. Um, they can fight back if they like, but in general, uh, you know, they want to try to hide. But if there's a hunter kind of off by himself, he can quickly just hit him in the back of the head and knock him out real quick, and he has less hunters to deal with. That's see. fun. Well, what, what's the identity of That's the hunter? Fun. We've been seeing furniture flying all over the place. What are the hunters doing? So the hunters, it kind of can be uh, divided into two different segments. Uh, the first part of the game is kind of almost like a detective game because they're sort of trying right. to figure out where the ghosts are hiding because it's not really uh, you know, obvious at first glance. So they've got gadgets like a footprint tracker, they've got like a radar like you saw to try to narrow down where in the haunted house these ghosts are hiding basically. Uh, as soon as the first ghost is found yeah. though, it starts getting a bit more chaotic. Uh, people, there's ragdolls flying everywhere and they have that <laughs> cannon to really try to smash the ghosts into pieces. So those are kind of the two aspects of the ghost. I see. Well, uh, talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for Midnight Ghost Hunt. I understand it's based on a Gary's Mod Mod called Prop Hunt. Right. So uh, that's definitely a big inspiration. But Gary's the big Mod twist Mod. for us is that the <laughs> props fight back. You saw the furniture. They hurl themselves yeah. at you. They knock you out. They send you flying. So it kind of almost becomes like this action hide and seek sort of mashup. Uh, the night suit is so funny, dude. Afraid of uh, the, the things that you're hunting. So that's yeah. Hey, King Kings, what's up? And I want to ask about Five Nights at Casper's. Midnight. We saw the very spooky red color pop up. We didn't see what happens then. What's going on then? So Midnight, if even uh, one ghost survives four minutes into the match, then uh, you hear this ominous grandfather clock chime across the map. All the lights will actually flicker out. It'll get really dark and scary. And all of the ghosts that were destroyed actually return as vengeful spirits. Uh, they're a lot more powerful than before, and they glow a very brilliant red. So at this point, uh, the tables have turned. The hunters are now the oh, hunted, no. and they just need to try to work together to uh, stay alive long enough for the evac to come. It's another four minutes. Oh, or so. geez. Usually the ghosts win when it gets to midnight. Are you talking about like like ninety percent of the time? Like the nine, yeah, like you, because the ghosts are so overpowered at midnight. Right. The hunters are doing whatever they can to try to prevent midnight from even occurring by destroying all right, of the right. ghosts and clearing the house. Well, awesome. When can people get the chance to try out Midnight Ghost Hunt? So we'll be running an alpha event later in the summer. Uh, you can sign up at midnightghosthunt.com. I'd also like to give a shout out to our Discord, uh, discord.gg slash midnightghosthunt. Uh, later in the summer, we'll be giving out keys on our Discord as well as on our main website. Well, wonderful. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Malone from Vaulted Sky Games. <laughs> For our next title, we got Frankie up in the balcony, and if I understand correctly, Frankie, this is a sequel. You do understand correctly, Sean, yes. It's a big sequel to a small indie game. Unexplored 2 is a procedural adventure, a roguelike that challenges you to fight, to be clever, and to solve its mysteries. 
explore a beautiful world, engage with its creatures, and befriend its people. Search for magic lakes and ancient statues until you die. And die again. Same. This is Unexplored 2. Same. Hey guys, welcome everybody. Welcome in, welcome in. We watching. Hi. <clears throat> Cornfire, are oh, you did? Let me know how it goes. I'm still trying to debate it. I'm trying to debate it. Oh, jeez. Oh, that was cool. Can you not fight? Are you not able to fight? Wait, what? can't fight. Oh, maybe you can? It's pretty, though. Wayfarer's legacy. That was cool. That was pretty. One of the biggest bang for your buck that you can get when building a new rig is investing in a new monitor. And here to talk about a groundbreaking new display is Samsung's hey, Dean Del Sarah. Give it to Welcome, me. Dean. Please be standard, though. What because, you got for us? Uh, I can't afford a new Samsung C27 RG5 curved gaming monitor. Well, let's take a look. Oh no, is this mic broken? Oh, PUBG. I wanted to love you longer than I did. 240 hertz. What the frick? Okay, it's curved, yeah, so I... I can't make use of it, but... start asking talk to me about some of those juicy features and specs so it's a 240 hertz curved gaming panel we believe it's a world first so you have lag free and tear free performance um, okay. and we think that the, the curve this 1500 art radius is going to be a very immersive experience you wouldn't get from a tra traditional flat panel and I wanted to ask a little bit about some of the color specs sure it's a 3001 contrast ratio so you get those deeper blacks brighter whites right. hopefully you'll see your enemies first before they see you in the dark scenes yeah, and I, I understand it also has G-Sync. I saw that flash Samsung up on the screen as well. Samsung's first G-Sync compatible monitor, so we're super excited about that. Well, since this is the PC gaming show and we're showing off a huge variety of games here, what are the types the of back games that you would expect that? The back is weird. 240 hertz refresh rate and the G-Sync to work well with. Sure. So we think everybody's going to appreciate the, the speed and the performance, but ultimately, esports first-person shooters are really going to benefit. Right. Well, of course, I have to ask, not just when is it available, but what, what type of cost are we talking? Sure, so it'll be available in mid-July for under $400. Uh, uh, three ninety nine. dollars channel. So it expands our gaming lineup to oh. eight miles, yeah. Because yeah, when you said 400, I mean, that's 27 inch is right. a $400 model. Wow. Yeah, so our gaming lineup will be expanded to eight models, ranging from 24 all the way up to a 49 inch dual QHD. Try uh, to see if I have room. Samsung.com slash gaming 240. I don't even think I'd have room. room for more info. Yeah, that's I don't think my I don't think my tri monitor no rig would allow it. <laughs> it's not 4K. It's not 4K. Not for that price point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to let you know that we have all sorts of great presentations and games. 4K coming is up. not Let's really look at what's coming up in the PC game. 4K is not not exactly Stay tuned for more announcements. standard yet, y'all. We're, we're just getting to 2K. 
Gearbox answers burning questions about Borderlands 3. The next game from Clay Entertainment. Whoa, that's a cool looking game. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole in Valfaris and more. That animated one looks really cool, actually. And now the PC Gaming Show presents What's Next from Funcom. <laughs> oh, God. That back and forth. <laughs> Leather pants. Dear God, girl. She's got small Hello, butt everyone. for years. Thanks for warm applause. Um, I know it's faux leather, it's but very still. Exciting Sorry, for all vegan of us at leather. Funcom to uh, be here at the PC Gaming Show for the very first time ever. And naturally, we would like to Audio crew, show what some are you of the doing? cool stuff that we've been working on. So, without further ado, here are some of the games coming for 2019. Something strange is going on all across the zone. I don't fear nothing until now. <laughs> You're a moose man. I love it. Hi, Tech. A lot's happened since you've been traveling, Khan. You could use your skills. Stalkers got each other's backs, right? What happens to you happens to me. Happens to me. So many top downs, dude. Sun off to fly among the stars. Please welcome to the stage, founder and director of Mighty Kingdom, Philip Mays. <laughs> you have people who are dressed nice, yeah, and then you have people have been in doing our own jeans. games for <laughs> over 26 years now. But recently, we had the great pleasure to be working with some other very talented developers. Dragon, thank you so much for your Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the Miscreants. And on that note, we get to I'd like in the to chat, please. Phil Mays. Uh, he is founder of Mighty Kingdom, a studio out of Australia, who has been working with us on something a little different. Thank you, Natasha. So on April 1st this year, we put out a little trailer for something called Conan Chop Chop. And uh, considering the day, Conan this was chop perhaps chop. no surprise that people decided that that was an uh, April Fool's joke. So, uh, yeah, we have a little surprise for you. Check this out. It's not. Oh, my God. When people think it's an April Fool's joke and it's really not. <laughs> I'd feel so bad as a developer. Like, no, we're serious. <laughs> All right, did they actually release an April Fool's joke? I think I missed that. Just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. A game that is definitely not real, but probably should be. Post-talk. To be honest, this isn't a million miles off looking like an actual good 2D roguelike Zelda game. It's kind of fun, actually. It should be Conan game where, like elements in a dungeon that would do Legend of Zelda proud. What more do you want? Well, let you know, we also have Cadence of Hyrule. September 3rd. Wow. 
Good twist of events. So there you have it, uh, Conan Chop Chop. It's a roguelike action adventure game. Uh, it's very real, and it's coming to PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch on September the 3rd this year, 2019. We nice. also have a playable version here at E3 at our demo room, so if you want to give stick figure Conan a try, then please don't hesitate to drop by. Thank Reminds you. me a little bit of cyanide and happiness. Thank you so much. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival game set in a post-apocalyptic -post future where the Earth has stopped rotating. The last humans need to outrun the blazing sun in massive open-world environments. Good times. But cheer up, sunshine. This is one of the most original-looking multiplayers we've seen, with interesting ideas underneath. A player-driven economy and some truly incredible death machines. Coming to Early Access on Steam on July 15th, let's take a trip to The Last Oasis. She's got a, she's a good script reader, you know. My tribe built wooden legs to lift us off the burning sand. We must move forward or die beneath the sun. Whoa. That's a cool contraption. It's cool looking. Jeez, what the? Machine freaking bow and arrows. Machine crossbows. Or, yeah. September 3rd as well. Wow. Pod Racer sequel, like <laughs> now this is pod racing. So many top downs, dude. I don't even know how people can keep playing these. I'm like, I play one and I'm like, I'm good on the genre, you know? But if you like them, all were props to you. Concept art looks really cool, though. It's very, very StarCraft esque. The name of the game is Dinosaurs Age of Freaking Wonders Losers. Planetfall, a 4X strategy game. And joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director, Leonard Sass, and principal gameplay developer, Tom Bird. Welcome, guys. Hi. Good to be here. Good to be here. At least the guy has like those pointed, the so, pointed Leonard, dress shoes. Just give us those the nice gist looking. of what Age of Wonders Planetfall is all about. Sure. Age of Wonders is a turn by strategy game where you play as one of the survivors of a shattered galactic empire. At the start of the game, you choose or, or create your own faction. Yeah. And they include uh, the vanguard expeditionary forces who are in cryo sleep when everything went to hell. Um, there's scavenging cyborgs or the Amazon bioengineers who ride dinosaurs into battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want to cool. ask because there's a pretty broad range of forex strategy games. To give a sense of what the gameplay is, I just want to start from the beginning of a game. What happens when you first land on a planet? Well, um, each race has their own spaceship. The spaceship comes down onto the planet. The planet is where the entire game takes place. Mm -hmm. And that spaceship will then transform into your capital colony, where your entire empire begins, your sort of attempt to take over the world. Around you, you've got a number of sectors, and each of these sectors has a little story. Well, not most of them. So maybe you'll find a genetics lab, which is still full of horrible mutant creatures, an entertainment complex overrun by horrible robot monsters, a temple with holes in the sky and horrible demons who come to get you. <laughs> He's so energetic. And I did see in the trailer dinosaurs with lasers, correct? Dinosaurs yeah, yeah. with lasers. Perfect. Well, cats I mean, with lasers. No, sorry. No cats with lasers. I'm so sorry to disappoint did all he of just you. No cats with lasers. You upset all the dinosaurs. Just 
You know, I saw the expansive tech tree yeah. show up in the game briefly, and I know that growing resource in tech is a huge part of yeah. strategy games. How does that function? Oh, right. so, cute. so part of these tech trees come for your origin race. They sort of represent the past of where you came from. They include new units, uh, new modules for your units, like jetpacks for your troopers, orbital laser cannons you can launch from space, um, social doctrines, it's not all about war. Um, yeah. And then uh, the second part of your tech tree comes from your secret technology, and that's all about the future of your faction. Uh, so you can create like a combination between man and machine or man and computers. Yeah. Uh, others include doomsday technologies that allows you to infect the entire population with alien brain-eating parasites or win the game by uh, splitting space-time. I love how many details you're giving me of the horrors that await <laughs> on the planet. Uh, the future is not a pretty place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to <laughs> ask about some of the combat that we saw. Because in a lot of strategy games, the combat can be very brief. It just you know, shows two armies pinging off each other. But I understand that the tactical layer is quite rich. Right, so when combat starts, you'll see like on the world map, maybe like a little sort of space lab or something like that. When you combat, go into combat, you will zoom all the way in and you will be inside the lab. You'll see all the pipes and all of the goops flowing around. All of your units, which you've been putting together and built, are now deployed in turn-based combat. You can move them into cover, use your abilities, shoot laser cannons. Maybe you've chosen the Dvar, so you've got like a bunch of space dwarves and little yeah. metal suits that dig holes in the ground, like shoot from the, from the holes. Maybe you've chosen the Kirko, sort of horrible alien yeah. bug monsters. They run forward and slash people and puke acid on them, that kind of thing. I mean, how, how long do some of these battles wind up lasting? It depends. A short battle can be maybe uh, two or three minutes, but at the end of the game, you know, you've got a massive siege with like 20 units on your side, 20 units on their side. You've got orbital cannons blasting wow. holes in the world. And that can maybe take 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Well, talk to us about oh when you play the game. Okay. The game is due uh, this August 6th. It's going to be available on PC, multiple platforms, consoles, uh, and it's available for pre-order now. Well, lovely. All hey, right. what's that URL? Uh, it's aow-planetfall.com. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's less than two months away. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining Thank me up much. on Thank stage. You. He is right. super hyped, Ace. Bye -bye, He's so hyped. Thank you for sharing the horrors of the future. <laughs> and for our next game, Frankie, I have to ask you, what year is it? Why? The year is 1946, Sean, my dear boy. Europe lies in ruins, torn apart by the satanic Plan D. A brave band of heroes cast their fury into hell, but little do they know, the nightmare is far from over. Actung, this is the world exclusive reveal of the next shooter from the makers of Sniper Elite 4. Jeez, dude, good actress. Rated M for Mature. It's probably how they wanted her to read it, y'all. wasn't blown to smithereens.
reminds me of Fortnite Save the World. <laughs> Dead War 4. Huh. You know, y'all, we give Hitler a lot of, lot of screen time. A lot, a lot of screen Later, time for being PC such a bad person. Show. A love letter to classic JRPGs. Hmm, that's cute. What's next for Warframe? A surreal noir adventure set before, during, and after the Big Bang. Baldur's Gate 3, and more. Mature. For nearly a hundred years, the root have ravaged the earth. So many post-apocalyptic. This one's reason. got dragons, though. We are victims to a hatred that we and do bad not group boys. understand. This they... evil will consume our world and the countless worlds beyond. Unless you rise. They are here. Jeez, dude. August twentieth. Not on Switch. Cue the hype guy. Oh my god, that was insane, Joining me on dude. the stage insane. to talk about Remnant from the Ashes and that trailer, we got the chance to see so much new gameplay footage and new environments. Let's welcome the CEO of Gunfire Games, David Adams. <laughs> Hello, David. So David, I want to ask right away for those who are unfamiliar with Remnant from the Ashes, what kind of game is it? So Remnant's a co-op action shooter set on an apocalyptic earth and across a bunch of cool fantasy worlds. And I mean, in that trailer, we got the chance to see a huge variety of different Jack Black. environments. It's not Jack Black. What are Black. these different places? Who's the player in this story? So as a player, you're on sort of an Odyssey-like quest to save the world. And uh, we really wanted to have a bunch of different cool locales that you go to just to experience a bunch of different stuff. And you start on Earth, but it, it rapidly changes very quickly as you get into the game. And one thing that we've you know, talked about before is that <sighs> replayability is a huge focus of the game, that you could play through it 10 times and still be seeing new bosses, new monsters, new locations. How exactly does that work? Yeah, I think one of the coolest features of the game is the dynamic generation system. So we generate the maps, the enemies, the quests, NPCs, bosses, everything. You, you built those all by hand, right? Yeah, it's all hand scripted, but the system takes all the pieces and stitches it together. So you might play the game and come into work and say, hey, I talked to a giant tree and fought a dragon boss, and I'd be like, I met a guy in a helicopter, an old guy in a helicopter, and killed a tree ant. And we'd have completely different experiences and, playing the same game. And you just have to keep going through and eventually explore what all the possibilities are. Yeah, you can play the game over and over again to see the stuff. You can jump into your friend's world to mm -hmm. experience the content in their world, and that's a big part of the game, just jumping in and seeing what you get. Well, I, I want to ask about loot, which is, you know, I understand, a big part of the game. How does it function alongside this ever-shifting gameplay experience? Yeah, the loot in the game is all legendary items, and it's tied into the uh, dynamic generation. So if you fight a boss or meet an NPC or get a cool, unique side quest, it generally coincides with a cool, unique item. There might be a boss weapon oh, or a magical item or armor. So if you play the game and you get all completely different events, you'll have different equipment than I have. And in the trailer, I also saw that there were three people walking through these. And you mentioned the co-op experience. How does co-op function in the world? So the game's full co-op from beginning to end. You can jump in at any point. And the game's definitely I mean, slower it looks paced, cool. more difficult. I mean, you will die a lot in this game. So awesome. there's a huge advantage to bringing your friends to come in there and help you take down bosses or fight off different events. Or That's cool that it places an importance on yeah, co-op. Well, yeah, it's a big fan of Bloodborne and Dark Souls, I'm really looking forward to Remnant from the Ashes. What, what's the release date, and where can people go for more information? So Remnant's coming out uh, August 20th on oh, awesome. PC and Xbox That's soon. and PS4. And if you pre-order the game now, you can actually get in early and start playing the game August 16th. Well, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, David Adams from Gunfire Games. I agree, Ace. I, I agree.
And as we mentioned earlier, keep those questions coming. I will be asking on stage the creative director of Borderlands 3 everything you want to know. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, just use hashtag PC Gaming Show. Mm. And until that time, let's talk about our next title. This one was announced two years ago at the PC Gaming Show here. It's a game from Clay Entertainment called Griftlands. It's changed quite a bit in the last two years. It's now a deck building roguelike where you don't just fight, but you also negotiate your way through a broken down sci-fi world. It's gonna be available on the Epic Game Store in one short month on July 11th in Alpha. Let's take a look at some of the footage of what you'll be playing. Oh, this is the animated one. This one looks cool. Oh, don't tell. Oh, never mind. It's a hard turn based game. Dang it! I mean, it's a cool concept on the card game. I gotta give it that. Available July 11th. It's cool. I just Planet Zoo it'd be cool is if it was real life combat. The makers of the you know? brilliant Planet Coaster. Please welcome. Here's Jackson and Lisa Bowens from Frontier Development. <laughs> now, Piers, what kind of zoo are we going to be running here? So, Planet Zoo is a new management sim game from us. Um, it involves you building and looking after a modern zoo and you get to look after the most authentic animals we believe you've ever seen in a video game. Each of our animals are unique. They have their own needs, their own desires, and their own behaviors. They interact with each other and react with the world you build around them. And today, for the very first time, we're really excited to show everyone here a gameplay video and to announce our launch date. Well, fantastic. Let's buy the world's Zoo. largest family park and take a look inside. Please be good. In-game footage. That's, ooh, that looks nice. Eh. That looks nice. I loved these kind of games, dude. I loved Zoo Tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon too. My sister had the full like collection that she got, so she had all of them. I'm pretty sure she just got stuck on Zoo Tycoon though. Wow, it looks so nice. Just like thinking about like where we came from, like what those graphics used to look like and how nice this one looks. 5th of November. Lisa, I love some of the animal shenanigans here. I mean, hippos pooing, yes. adorable baby elements. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to play it. But before are she's we leopard? The trailer, they are. This is a modern zoo, but what exactly does that mean? So nowadays, when you go to the zoo, you're not just going to see all the lovely, pretty animals. You go there, you want to be, you know, learning about conservation. Uh, you want to learn about the research that they're doing. You want to be educated, and these are all things that you're going to be able to do in Planet Zoo. And these ideas of the modern zoo is really what we take to heart, and we're going to be promoting you know, the health and the welfare of your animals as the most important thing to do. 
And Piers, when can we see more gameplay and when are we going to be able to get our hands on it ourselves? So we're um, obviously demoing the game all, um, all this week at E3, but most people aren't going to be able to see that. So we've recorded our presentation. Lisa's done a fantastic mm -hmm. voiceover for it. And we'll be releasing that onto Frontier's YouTube channel. That goes live this Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Well, fantastic. I cannot wait to watch. Thank you so much for joining us. Piers and Lisa, everyone. Next up, we have a very special guest all the way from Japan. Please welcome to the stage, gaming industry legend and Shenmue creator, Yu Suzuki. Shenmue! That is right! Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the stage is a legend of Japanese game development. It's Mr. Yu Suzuki! It's not Miyamoto. Hello, everyone. In addition to being the brains behind the following games, Hang On, Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner, Virtual Racing, and Virtual Fighter, Yusan also created the Shenmue series. And he's here to talk about Shenmue 3 right now. Take it away, Yusan. I know some people on Twitter are freaking out right now. I just want to say thank you to the, all the fans supporting me for the long 20 years. Thank you very much. The wait. the wait is nearly over. That's right. Let's take a world exclusive look at Shenmue 3. Honestly, I don't think your Kung Fu is strong enough. Uh, Grandmaster, I... Still boxy, boy, but it's ago, okay. He looks martial good. Martial arts were bad, but humans are interesting creatures. Wow. They practiced in secret, away from prying eyes, and became stronger. One even practiced atop this very boat. Nam Tren survived the ban and was passed on in this way. Rip. Aww. Dude, I think Why of where the game comes from me? now. Stop it. They threaten and extort money from the shop owners, get drunk by noon, and cause trouble. Everyone in town is afraid of them. They are heartless. Hey, wait right there. Are you okay? This is him. The Japanese guy who got in our way. You've got some guts to barge in here on your own. Oh, that's awesome. I know. There are definitely so many the people have been waiting for Shenmue 3. I would like to once again thank you so much. Thank you, Yusan, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You, everyone. Thank you. Aww. Now our next title is near and dear to my childhood heart. It's based upon a game I grew up playing called Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Let's take a look at an upcoming collaboration between Coffee Stain Studios and Lava Potion. expansion need to me on the walls 
term hours with hours? <laughs> Could have said some like towers? Powers? The name okay. of the game is Another Songs of Conquest, and here to join me in talking about it is the lead designer from Lava Potion, Carl Toffelt. Hey, yeah. Carl. Ah, hey, thanks. I'm not even going to try I to mean, say his name. Let's just start off. For anyone who maybe hasn't played the Heroes of Might and Magic series, what is Song of Conquest all about? Um, it's all about, um, well, you kind of start out with in the town that you just saw in the, in the right. trailer, and uh, from there you recruit your wielders, is what we call our commanders, and uh, yeah. you recruit an army, and then you kind of send off your wielders on an adventure. And they go exploring yeah. the world, they pick up resources to flag mines, and with those resources, you upgrade your town so you can get more stuff, and that's kind of what you do. Adventure and strategy combined. Yeah, and, you know, I know that part of the core loop is, obviously, get the resources to build up the township, but yeah. for what reason? Armies, man. Talk to me about those juicy battles. Yeah, so, so the battle, just like the whole game, is turn-based. Uh -huh. So you go into combat, you bring all your troops in, and you start by deploying them, and then all the troops have different stats, like offense and defense and health sure, and so sure. on. And they go in initiative order, and then you slug it out, and it's a bit like chess, but instead of like pawns and bishops, you have like horned wands and face spirits. Great. And yeah. Griffins and so on. Yeah, and all those things. And well, you know, as, as someone who just loves the Heroes of Might and Magic series, I know that you have translated a lot of the gameplay elements into Songs of Conquest, yeah. but... What are some of the modern elements that you're bringing in? Um, well, there's a lot of it, but I mean, one of them is our magic system. We call it the essence. So basically, uh -huh. um, in, our, in the Songs of Conquest universe, everything has an essence within them, sort of like the soul. So your troops, they have an essence. And to do magic, you need to bring the troops with the right essence with your wielders. Oh, you know. I see. So if you want to uh, like make your troops go faster, you need to bring a troop that has that essence, like cavalry. And maybe to ask a basic question, what if my opponent kills that cavalry? Then you can't do the magic. So, oh, right? I see, okay. Yeah. yeah, so if you're fighting someone, you kind of have to like weigh the pros and cons of what to kill off. Like, do you want to destroy their magic or their powerful troops? I think Ubis Ubisoft's had uh, information. Uh, and as three? always, when's it coming out? In late 2020. Oh, it's quite a ways off. It's quite a ways off, but you can go to songsofconquest.com and sign up for our alpha, and then oh, you can play earlier. Well, as you know, I'm really looking forward to playing it, Carl. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, our next title is an update to a popular co-op game. Let's see what's in store oh, it's for Vermin Tide 2. We might take a short a short break in between then. If this if this doesn't run all the way up, we might take a short break so I can freaking get some food. That's a big boy. Universe of Pickle Rick. It's a different take on the Black Plague, dude. Vermin Tide versus. <laughs> uh. I don't know half these games, dude. You so y'all are all like, ah, oh, PvP. It's a sequel, and I'm like, too, which turns rats. the Warhammer Fantasy cooperative <laughs> game into something even more brutally competitive. God, there's so many it games out. It looks deliciously vile, and surely dismembering Skaven is so much more satisfying when you know you're going ham on a fellow player, making him or her tiny little baby rat tears behind their computer screen. You can sign up now for the Vermintide 2 versus beta at vermintide2.com forward slash virgin. Versus. In Per Aspera, you're an artificial consciousness orbiting Mars, whose ultimate purpose is to terraform the planet, starting from a single drone in your landing site and turning the planet into a flourishing second home for humanity. Courtesy of developer Talon Industries and publisher War Fury, here's a first ever look at Per Aspera. As we all know, reaching the Red Planet was not humanity's greatest achievement. Transferring the complexity of the human mind to machines was. So they can succeed where we fail. So they can build us a home on that distant, dusty rock. 
Today, Amy reaches Mars and begins their mission. Amy, are you with us? Of course, I'm with you, Houston. Another top down, dude. Oh my lord. Uh, Y'all. Uh, like, if you like these games, it's great, but I need some variety in my life. Per Ascra. Okay, now Assassin's I understand Creed what you're Universe, saying. Our next guest sent players back in time to rewrite history. But for his debut project with indie studio Panache Digital Games, he's going to take us back 10 million years to where humanity began. Here to tell us all about ancestors is creative director and co-founder Patrice Desolet. Welcome, Patrice. Thank you for having me. Really happy to be here. It's I've been waiting 10 years yes. to come back on the big stage at E3 showing off a game. Well, it's fantastic to have you back. I just want to ask, what inspired you to tell the story of human evolution? Well, when I started Panache, I needed a game, uh, a, an open world game in which you can do a lot of things. You need a character in a 3D environment at first. And I said, oh, I'm the historical guy. I'm the historical dude. So I need an historical period. So I said, oh, let's go back at the very beginning. It'll be easier to do. Because I won't have to build a city. I won't have to build technology. And I was a bit naive. Because we built Africa 10 million years ago. That's so, and that's not easy to build. It doesn't sound easy. I mean, how have you turned those scenes into gameplay? Well, y you play our last common ancestor, right, of all the big apes, and then you have to explore your, your environment, and eventually you expand your territory, you expand your clan, because you're not playing that one badass character. You play a group of badass characters. And eventually you evolve into different species, up until Lucy the Australopithecus, roughly two million years ago. I imagine our ancestors had uh, a lot more issues to deal with than we do today. There's going to be a lot more dangers in this world, so tell me a bit more about those. Well, it's all about from a prey to a predator. Basically, at the beginning of the game, everybody is there to kill you and devour you. And, and, and basically, at the end, it's pretty much you. You're the predator, and everybody's afraid of you. And that's, that's the idea of ancestors, the humankind odyssey. So, Patrice, ultimately, what is the key to evolving your clan successfully? Curiosity. Wasn't this the one that was announced at the Game Awards? Explore, because, you know, I made a game about characters and you needed to follow the story I wrote for you. This time, you're basically writing the story, right? There's, there's no story per se inside. It's not about going and see mission givers. It's not about looking at the mini maps and the little dots. It's about you, hey, Homo sapiens. Can you survive like our ancestors did? And that's the question I'm asking the players. And be for you to answer that question August 27th well, I was gonna on PC you, first. I was going to ask you when we can see it, and you answer my question first. Thank you yeah, so much, I'm getting Patrice. good at this. As Patrice says, Ancestors will be released August 27th, and you can learn more at ancestorsgames.com. Thank you. I kept looking at her and not the camera. That was awkward. She's like, stop. It looks so good, dude. really cool with the owl, right? Or the hawk or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Untitled Goose Game! Ah, get it, card. Get it. Enter the dungeon, like. What the golf? Here we go. 
Yeah, that game looks cool. And one more thing. I can't even read that. What? Auto chess? Please welcome to the stage, Loring Lee, founder and CEO of Dragon Nest. Indeed, auto chess has turned Ooh. out to be a sensation with hundreds of thousands, millions of players getting a taste of it and here to talk about it's coming to PC is yeah. Loring Lee. Take it away, Loring. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Loring Lee. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm the CEO and the founder of Dragon's Game. Dragon's Game is a game developer and a publisher coming from China. I'm so happy to be here today on this stage to introduce our game, Auto Chess, to all of you. This is really an exciting moment for us. And so Twitter says, this is a real engaging game of Auto Chess. Dragon's Game now is working with the creator of Auto Chess, Dodo Studio. Uh, we have worked together to bring auto chess to our world, both on PC and uh, mobile, so that everyone from anywhere with any device can enjoy the same fun of auto chess. Now, we are building the PC version with, uh, by using the uh, game engine of Unreal Engine 4. As everyone knows, Unreal Engine is one of the best game engines of the world. With the, help, with the help of Apple Games and uh, by the power of uh, Unreal, I believe we can finish our job quickly and efficiently. And uh, today, I'm very glad to announce the PC version of Auto Chess will be coming to the Epic Games Store. I look forward. Another Epic Games, yeah. huh? I look forward to all of you playing Auto Chess on PC later this year. Okay, thank you, thank you everyone. Uh -huh. Thank you, Loring Lee. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing the news with us. Once again, Auto Chess, if you have not played it, you must check it out, it is so fun. Our next title with Frankie up above. Is it micro action? an inspired indie game. We'll find out, Sean, because one of the things we love about PC gaming yeah, is the way the game from all over the world can draw inspiration from one another's work. Better. Chris oh, is a great example of that. A gorgeous indie love letter to classic JRPGs developed by a team in Colombia. This is that really Chris colorful spin one, on right? the genre brings a unique perspective that lets you see the past, present, and future on one screen at the same time. So you'll see the future change based on your decisions in real time. Oh, that's cool. Here's the world exclusive reveal of Chris Tales. If you saw what was, what is, and what would be. If you knew how it ends, would you change it? Could Pretty. you make the hard decisions? And would you be strong enough to fight? That's pretty, what the heck? If you learn from the past and act in the present, you can rewrite the future. I've only seen gameplay though. What the? In PC gaming. It's not the size of your weapon, it's how you use it. Mm -hmm. And I'm holding one of
one of the, well, well quite frankly, it's, it's a bit average, isn't it? It's just your average, you know, Glock, really. No, <laughs> it's one of the ridiculous alien weapons from our next game, Valkyrie. Like a brutal, heavy metal infused 2D action platformer <sighs> inspired by true old school classics like Concha and Turrican. Assuming the role of fearless warrior Farium, players must blast and slash their way through the doomed citadel of Valfaris, overcoming its deadly environments and enemies before challenging the arcane evil at its very heart. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole from publisher Big Sugar. This is Valfaris. This is that pixelated one too, right? Yeah. Very like. That seems like 2D to 3D ish. much like Castlevania mixed with Metroid, the Metroidvania. It's the most Metroidvania looking one I've seen. All right. Just incredible action in the Valforest trailer. I'm very excited for our next guest. In case you have not been Jeez. in downtown LA, E3 is covered with Borderlands 3 art. It's amazing, it's beautiful. And joining me is the amazing and beautiful Paul Sage, creative director <laughs> Metro of Doom Borderlands Vania. 3. <laughs> Beautiful's a new one. <laughs> yeah, there it. you go, Paul, right. welcome. I mean, there's been so much hype around Borderlands 3. What's the stuff you're really excited to be sharing this year at E3? Oh man, so, you know, we've talked about our vault hunters. Well, this time we get to talk about Moe's and she is our uh, gunner vault hunter, so yeah. she has a big mech, so it's one of the things. All about loot, we're talking about you know the different loot, such as shields, grenades, those yeah. things, going to different planets, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Well, I mean, I wanna start right off with Moe's. Tell us everything you can about her. Okay, yes, I'll tell you everything I can. So Moe's, again, like I said, she's a mech pilot. She has this big mech, it's called Iron Bear. She gets into Iron Bear. Yeah. Iron you Bear, know, I love it. action skills, which means that she can equip either a minigun or a rail gun or a flamethrower, you know, if you wanna barbecue your enemy, something like that. Oh, so, nice, you know, uh, Yeah, Moe's is a, a terrifically fun character for us right now. Now, we've been excited to be collating a whole bunch of community questions. We're gonna break them into two categories. First, there's a whole bunch of repeat questions that I wanna make sure we get to right now. One of the big categories is about loot, because you've mentioned having a billion guns earlier, but what can you tell us about some of the other gear, the other progression systems right. in the game? Yeah, so uh, you, let's talk about grenades, like one of my favorite things that we don't get to talk about a lot. So in the past, we've had grenades. If they've had yeah. like one thing, they can bounce, they can stick to different things, you know? Yeah. This time, we're combining like all of those things. So for instance, the other day I was playing and I threw a grenade and that grenade had a bounce, it would stick, an explosion would come out and the grenade would fire guns as it was going through. Oh right? my so God. We have like a ton of different <laughs> grenades that, that are in there. Shield where if you duck, that shield will extend out in the front heck? of you, you know? So oh, just, just like tons of different things that we have with our characters, class mods, class Don't mods. Don't do this to us. And that they give you skills this time as well as enhancing the skills you currently have. I, I also remember earlier you mentioned about artifacts. What are those? So artifacts are, you know, we, we've kind of concentrated on like, hey, does the game feel fluid? Can I, you know, slide into things? Can I jump? Posted by Stadia. Right, right, right. So when we were playing with that, we, had, we slid into a barrel, right? And the barrel exploded and we're like, well, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So why don't we do something like that? So our artifacts actually certain things to movement. So for instance, you can slide faster, you can slide, and every time you slide, there's an explosion. We have something we call- <laughs> Oh my call God. Dude, someone's trying to shut down Borderlands right now. category of questions unrelated to loot. category of questions unrelated to loot. Well, there's gonna be a single player campaign. Is YouTube having this problem What's gonna too? be happening after the campaign? What are some of the beyond the single player, maybe end game content that you can talk about? All right, in-game content. Okay, well, it's E3, so i give a little bit. So we have this Great. thing what we call the Guardian system. So for those people who played Borderlands before, you might remember Badass Ranks. Badass Ranks, you can get, you know, it's basically kind of an infinite progression system that added to your stats. Yeah. We doubled down on that. We have what we call Guardian Rank. And Guardian Rank not only has that infinite progression, but it has skills in different skins that you can open More up More people on Twitch than YouTube, that's awesome. The cool thing awesome. about that is, like, 
every character that you play out okay, on so that account the gets both the benefits ends. of Guardian Earth. Oh, interesting. It's a stream on both ends. All right, last YouTube's category we're going to go too. through, and then we're going to hit some rapid-fire questions. How do the boss fights in Borderlands 3 compare to Borderlands 1 and 2? I know those were big aspects. What? How do you build upon that? Right, so I think of a boss fight, you know, like I, I'm an old school Nintendo fan, right? So I love huge boss fights that have like oh, three yeah. phases and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, boo. So now those people, you know, smart people in the audience know that we've talked about going to vaults instead of vault, right? And so there are right, different right. like huge boss encounters there uh, that are just, you know, multi-phase boss encounters. We have like a lot of different mini bosses throughout the game. So a lot of different boss encounters throughout the game. Well, now I want to ask some really quick questions that should be yes or no, very brief. First, from Castoray, how will you be handling multiplayer? Um, multiplayer, we will basically be allowing anybody to jump in at any time. So, awesome. From it. MHL Animations, can I pet the gun? Great question. I'm not here to judge what you do with your gun. So, you know, you, that's a personal question. All right, great. <laughs> Sam Wiseman asks, is Maya's new companion a siren? People are asking the right questions. That's what I will say about that. Oh, Ooh. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, from Ironic Sanguine says, is Tiny Tina going to be seen fighting alongside the Vault Hunters? Yes. Nice. All right, nice. I'm just going to blast through a couple more as fast as I possibly can. Right. Uh, what's the level cap at launch? 50. Will we get to see Flack? Yes. Will we see golden keys and or shift codes for Borderlands 3? Absolutely. Will there be duels? Yes. Other kinds of PvP? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> and also maybe. And Perfect. Maybe, yeah. And will you be able to transfer weapons between your characters? Absolutely, right from the start. Perfect. And when is the damn game coming out? Friday the 13th, 2019, September 13th. Perfect. Borderlands.com for more information. Thanks so much for joining me on stage. I didn't know it was Rob, Friday the 13th. You. And once again, if you have not seen all the setups in downtown for Borderlands 3, oh, they're beautiful. Our next game, we're going to be revisiting a guest that we saw earlier in the show. He's what is the game coming out? Frank. Yes. What you got for us? Oh. Oh, hi. We're, we're live. Sorry. Hello. I was really? just, uh, yeah, I was actually testing out my outfit for this weekend. I don't know. What do you think, John? I, I think you look really sharp, as always. Very sharp. Well, thank you so much. John Gibson, president of Tripwire, thank you for joining us again on the show. Yeah, I'm very, very excited to be busy here. man. Yes. Yes. Now, last year, we She's revealed Man Eater to the world. And can you right. remind anyone who missed it what the game's all about? Frankie Shark, do, 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 Frankie Shark. Action <laughs> RPG or Shark PG, as we call it. You start as a, a small baby shark pup, and you have to survive in this harsh <laughs> world and try to eat your way to the top of the ecosystem. The three words that we think sum the game up the best are eat, explore, and evolve. And uh, we also have someone <laughs> we'd like you to meet. Well, let's meet him then. Let's take a look at the new trailer. More cowbell. Wow. He's the luckiest guy alive. You come any closer with that camera, we two gonna toss it. Oh my god. Guy's blissfully unaware. No! Birdie, no! John. Who was that? appallingly dressed fisherman in the trailer because quite frankly not even I would eat him. <laughs> that was Scaly Pete and Scaly Pete's the villain in this tale. Sk Pete is uh, is a best fisherman in the Gulf, best shark fisherman or he'll tell Hashtag you he's the best F shark fisherman. to respect the shark. And uh, he disfigures our baby shark at the beginning of the Do game I press and this? he does some really nasty things. Do I just so have to type? He's not a very nice guy. I'm not guy. gonna pull up chat. I'm now, not that dumb. The story of Maneater is told uh, through the lens of a they reality said show press called Alt Shark F4 Hunters to respect the shark. And it follows Pete and uh, the player shark 
on its adventures. And uh, you know, it's it's a really you know it's it's a very exciting way uh, way to tell a story. And based on that trailer, to be honest, John, it looks like your main goal of the film is to just buy everything. Yeah, there is there is an awful lot of man eating going on in this game. That is the name of the game. And uh, but we'd like to think of the game as a shark tastic fun action game. It's like GTA if you were a shark. Um, but there's. If there, there is more to the oh game God. than just eating, oh, so oh, uh, man. we spent a lot of time making, moving through the water, breaching out, and uh, and adding abilities to go up on the beach for an afternoon snack. Um, so uh, there's there's a, a lot of exciting things that you can do in the game. And you mentioned before it's a shark PG. How does that progression system work? So there's three facets to to the shark PG elements of the game. Shark PG, uh, there's growth, dude. There's life phases and there's evolutions. So growth uh, comes about through eating things, nutrients, people, oh whatever you can find. And that's kind of like your XP in the game. That allows you to level up, your shark will grow a little bit, you'll get more powerful. And then at key phases, uh, we call it's like a freaking phases, motorboat. You'll, you'll, you'll make a big jump. So let's say you're a, a brooding teenage shark and you're about to become an adult. When you become an adult, you take a big leap in size, a big leap in gr uh, a power and capability. And then as you reach these life phases, you unlock evolutions that can be applied to parts of the shark's body. For example, you could get metallic teeth that allow you to shred boats, or a powerful tail that allows you to jump to incredible heights, or you could get mutated lungs that allow you to spend a little more time on the beach getting those afternoon snacks. Just really the quickly, John, heck. wanting to know this question. When's it coming out? Oh, uh, so we're really hard hammerheading away at this game uh, and trying to make it the most awesome shark RPG ever. Um, we do not ready to announce a date, but we're pretty certain you're going to see it before the next PC gaming show. Well, I hope we do, John. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start biting people. In fact, I'm quite hungry at the moment, so I think actually I'm going to find an audience member because you guys look tasty. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to have a snack. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, God. You and racing got a spot here. I like my chair better. Thank you very much. You know, one of the absolute best parts about being sponsored by Iwin for the PC Gaming Show is that I get to sit for this next oh, segment. Oh, it's Iwin? About Terraria. Terraria is one of the best-selling PC games of all time, selling almost 30 million copies. That's a lot. Part of the reason why it's maintained such popularity is the fact that the developers Relogic continue to add content, going from 250 items at release to now over 4,000. Let's take a look at their penultimate expansion coming up, Terraria Journey's End. I've only ever watched people play this game. Two D Minecraft. <laughs> Yeah, like TikTok plays a lot. He uh, TikTok plays a lot of uh, Terraria. Like every time I hop into a stream, he's like playing it. God dang it, PC gaming show. Oh, yeah. The next title that we're going to be looking at that was weird is a game that is the spiritual successor to her story. It's called Telling Lies by Annapurna Interactive, and joining me to talk about it is game director Sam Barlow. That was and weird. And actor producer Logan Marshall Green. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. My main man. Now, I'm if, in if you haven't played her story, you totally should. It's fantastic. I want to know. Don't be that guy. It is a game where you watch live interactive video in order to uncover what happened with a murder. What, what is it that's going on in Telling Lies? What's the premise? So, uh, like her story, Telling Lies is a game in which you watch video footage to piece together a story. 
And this time we have a woman who has stolen an NSA hard drive, which contains secretly recorded intimate and private conversations between our four characters. Something has gone terribly wrong, and it's up to you to figure out what and why. It's time to take a look at some of the gameplay mechanics and see telling lies in action. Take a look. I don't know if they skipped the whole section or what. some questions for you about what we've just seen. Let, I mean, talk to me about the mechanics. I mean, I saw, you know, the subtitles The dude with the pink shirt. Highlighting, and it was loading was more video footage. too What's good looking on? to be a developer? So what we do in Telling Lies Aww. is we take all of the... You say attractive people can't be developers? Normal video game. So all that walking you say developers can't be attractive yeah. people? And we apply that directly to the story. What are you saying? So you're going to be scrubbing around in these clips, paying close attention, and you're going to be picking up on the subtext, listening to names, people, places, and with that information, you're going to use that to find more clips. Dig it's into like a logic scene, puzzle. And over time, kind of build up this picture of the story. And it's, it's truly like an open world video game. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of times with open world video games, they talk about you know, the square kilometer edge or miles in America. Um, what's the sort of scope that we're talking about? Like how many hours of footage is there? So we got like over 10 hours of footage here. Wow, so it, really? it's a story that encompasses like two years what I wanted to do with this one was, like I said, really embrace this idea of it being an open world game. You're free to explore and follow your curiosity, just lose yourself in this story, yeah. all the characters. It's this huge, messy, colorful story that we're trying to tell. Well, I'm curious, mm -hmm. Logan, as a, as a performer in this kind of game, what is it like to actually try to have all the layers in there for each performance, also not knowing when a player is going to be seeing the specific footage you're performing? Well, it's definitely a non-linear uh, open world game, but our approach and Sam's approach was um, not unlike a movie or a TV show, and we had to understand it A to B. And so, for the most part, that's how we shot it, obviously, when you're shooting a movie or a TV <coughs> show. Yeah. Um, and in this case, a game, you're gonna be shooting out of, out of order, but we actually stayed pretty linear in how we approached the story. We, we went after it like uh, all the other times we were actors, we just went after intention yeah, yeah. And, and what do we want? And, and, um, and we tried to make it as deep. Um, you know, it's got a lot of scope, yeah, um, right. but we wanted to, to make it as deep as possible and Sam is one of the best uh, movie or TV directors I've worked with, so it was uh, very similar. Guy. Nice, yeah, look, yeah. look at you two. Yeah. Now, of course, I do want to stress to any of He's you. He's just who really clean cut. Story, it's quick to play through. It's absolutely like brilliant. all of them Please are attractive, but the only thing different is his hair well, is course, not just close out. shaved. He actually has it very styled, soon. Very soon and then he has a really soon. clean right beard. Now you can go to Steam. You can wishlist on Steam. We all love Steam, um, and yeah, very soon we'll be showing a little bit more of during E3, and uh, the game will be out. Yeah, very soon. Fantastic. Desperate to get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as that'll be an interesting out. game. Well, Sam Logan, thanks so much for joining me on stage once again, telling lies. That'll be interesting. Now, up on the balcony, Frankie's gonna be talking to us about a game that my friends, year after year after year, keep telling me I have to play because of how much they've improved it. Frankie, what's going on with Warframe? Well, one of my oh, okay. favorite parts of last year's show, aside from being upstaged by a giant duck, 
we're getting a glimpse at the future of Warframe. And here with the latest look at the next expansion to the universe is Space Mum Rebecca Ford. So, chat, behave yourselves, please, because Mother's here. Now, Rebecca, look at the camera, not the screen. We uh, we're going to take a look at an amazing trailer that our team has put together. Uh, a lot of our players have been waiting a year for a look at what we've been calling Railjack, so it's about time to, you know, see what we've been doing. Yeah, let's take a look. So awkward when they look at the monitor too early. live on July 6th. Okay. Didn't really show much, but... Oh, snap. Did he just... Just freaking Doctor Strange, that guy. He just knocked, he just knocked his soul in the next year. The frick? That guy's already freaking playing Cyberpunk 2077. Rebecca, it must be so exciting to know that the fans have finally seen it, and you're clearly going all in on the epic space combat. So tell me about the new stuff that players are going to be able to experience. I wasn't shaking before we started talking, and now I am because it's real, because, you know, Empyrean is what we're calling Codename Railjack. It's basically taking the space ninja part of Warframe, sending it back up to space, bringing players that squad gameplay they know, taking the enemies like the Corpus and the Grenier, giving them their own Railjack to you know, essentially explore the solar system with and take down the bad guys and when that's cool. gonna get to see more well uh tenocon is in london ontario it's july 6th and you can come uh watch it online on twitch we're going to be showing a lot more in our keynote for uh what empyrean is going to be well today i'm getting a feel for the suit so uh what's the deal with that sweet little necklace prime how do i get my tenno arms into it i yeah. cannot say that on live television but uh you know there, there are ways but yeah you just have to watch link your warframe account to your twitch account if you watch 30 minutes of our Tenno Live show, you can get it, but hopefully you stay for the whole hour because we got lots to show. Well, thank you so much, Aww. Rebecca, and good luck That's with TennoCon on July 6th. Thank you. Okay, now we've seen some amazing stuff today, but nothing quite so gloriously strange as our next game. Developed by Brooklyn-based studio Feral Cat Den, it's an existential space jazz odyssey set during the Big Bang. Yeah, it actually uh, blew my mind learning about this one. Buckle up, everyone, because we're about to get bonkers with Genesis Noir. Oh, that's cool artwork. Another side scroller, eh? Interesting. What? This was what? A cosmic adventure. Doesn't say what it's gonna be on though. Noir, just beautiful, stylish art. The next game we're gonna take a look at is the twist on the stealth genre. It's called El Ijo, where you play as a six-year-old trying to escape a monastery and find your mother, mother using toys and tricks to avoid monks. Let's take a look at this gorgeous spaghetti western inspired project from Studio Handy Games. Why would you run from the monks? Normally they're the ones that save you.
the Western music. It's a cute art style. So it's basically my least favorite part of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which was hiding from the knights. at the end of this. Aw, that's cute. Aw. El Ijo, once again, is the title of the trailer Aww, we just saw. that was cutie. For our final guest Singing tonight. Wind Waker? Please join yeah, me in except, welcoming well, I don't know if you're hiding in barrels or anything, CEO but... Sven Vinke, and from uh, Dungeons & Dragons at Wizards of the Coast, the creative director of Dungeons & Dragons, Mike Baldur's Merle, Gate. to talk about Baldur's right, Give me Gate a better three. idea of this, because I'm still lost on it. Yeah! Now, this was only just recently announced. How did this partnership come about? Uh, we went to see Wizards of the Coast at the end of uh, Divinity Original Sin 1. Yeah. That was back in 2014. And I tried to convince them back then that they should give us the Baldur's Gate 3 license. And they said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, but we had a long chat about yeah. um, what the vision would be for the game. And then uh, we kept on bumping into each other. And then uh, suddenly in uh, 2016, I get a phone call from Nathan Stewart, who's the big boss of Mike and the head of Dungeons and Dragons. He said, yeah. you need to come to Seattle right away. And uh, we're gonna have dinner in a very shady restaurant. And he ah. had this big stack of paper <laughs> with him. And on it was Baldur's Gate 3. And in it was pretty much everything that we talked about. And he says, I'm wow. going to send this to my board. Do you still want to do it? Wow. Of course, I still want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then a couple of weeks later, we were started negotiating. And here That's we are. That's awesome. I mean, what does the Baldur's Gate franchise mean to you, Mike? Oh, to me, it's the crown jewel of D&D &D, uh, computer games, right? I mean, for me personally, Baldur's Gate, the original one, was the ch finally I had the chance to actually play a D&D campaign rather yeah. than having to run them for all my friends. So it just it means so much to us. Baldur's Gate, it's you know such fantastic storytelling. I want to say something and mean, but I'm not so going to. It's so exciting to see it come to a, not only a new generation of gamers, yeah. but for the gamers who will remember of the 20 years it's been since the right. original, the first two in the series. So it's incredibly exciting. And for us, it really is it's such an important part of the yeah. game. It's awesome that they're cool. excited we, about we it. We got a chance to see the trailer. Talk to me about some of the story elements, the world elements. What are things we're going to see in Baldur's Gate 3? Well, we're only talking about what's in the trailer right now. But uh, obviously, you're going to go to the city, because we start with the city. Uh, you start outside of the city, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be mind flayers. Uh, they're very nasty. Uh, you are seeing in the trailer the process of seromorphosis, as we would yeah. call it. Uh, it's accelerated, so that's not normal. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot of iconic creatures, iconic characters, iconic places, and that's as far as we go. I'm, I'm curious about some of the gameplay elements, because obviously, you know, there's just been a big resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons, tons of broadcasts on Twitch. Um, I mean, how do you translate Baldur's some of the Gate, insane Champ. things that players you want to do it, into, me. you know, what has to be a structured computer game? So we started with the player handbook, which is basically the basic rule set of Dungeons uh, and Dragons. Which, which player handbook? Which uh, edition? Fifth edition. Fifth edition. Great. Yeah. And so we ported uh, as much as we could to the video game. We looked at what works really well. We looked at the things that didn't work that well because it is a video game and this yeah. was made for uh, uh, tabletop gaming. And uh, so we started modifying those things. And then we had to. It's gonna be interesting to see how it really, really, really works. Uh, if you play tabletop, you have a game master and you say, well, I wanna do this. Yeah. And then the game I wanna master start a fight with a pigeon. And he's like, okay, roll yeah, for sure. dexterity. Exactly. That's yeah. it. So we had to add systems to make that possible within the game. But we've been, we've gone very, very far. Yeah, I mean, can you give an example of like a crazy moment that a player might do that you could actually play out in the game? Uh, well, I could, let's say that we get into a fight because you ask a nasty question, I don't want to answer it. <laughs> and uh, I take the chair over there, I put it on fire, smash it on your head. Uh, well, just as an example. It's just an example, <laughs> it's fine, we're just talking, we're just uh, talking. These are things that we have to put systems into the game for to, to do it, which are not necessarily going to be described inside of the book. Interesting. And, and I mean, like, hmm. Mike, in terms of your role, Speaking to Larian Studios, you have tons of data of all the sorts of things that players do. What's the sort of information that you 
provide an assistance. Well, really what it comes down to is providing the story support. You know, we think of Dungeons and Dragons, the universe of D&D. Uh, it's like a, a toy box for dungeon right. masters and players to go into and build their own stories. So working with Laramie and working with Ven, a lot of it was just opening up that toy box and sharing it and giving that kind of guidance. You know, like I remember w one of our first meetings, we just laid out a map of Baldur's Gate and the Sword Coast and asking a lot of questions like, what kind of story do you want to tell? Where do right. we want to go? What are the cool locations we've always wanted to put in a game like this? And then for the, in terms of the system support, you know, what, what does it mean in terms of the story for each character, for, e for each character race, each character class? So that if you, know, if, if you have your favorite class and it's in the game, you really feel like you're taking on that role that you love so much from a tabletop, yeah. really coming to life in an authentic way in Baldur's Gate 3. And we're gonna talk in a moment about you know, Baldur's Gate 3 release dates and whatnot, but we have a second game that we wanna talk about and on a new technology known as pencil and paper. I understand that there is yeah. a tabletop prequel coming for Baldur's Gate. Oh, exactly. that's cool. So People in Baldur's like Gate, we think there's one saga. All the different games coming together to yeah. tell one grand story of this city. So uh, on September 17th, we're releasing our next tabletop campaign, uh, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus, and it is the next chapter in the Baldur's Gate saga, right. and it's a prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. So if you haven't played a Baldur's Gate game since Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, this is your chance to check out on the history. It's been about 100 years since the events of Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah. So this will give you a chance to check in on the city, to see what's going on, its current state, who the movers and shakers are. We also feature a complete levels 1 to 13 campaign that takes you from the mean streets wow. of Baldur's Gate to the depths of hell itself and sort of pose to the players yeah. a question, do you, do you want to redeem Baldur's Gate or send it to damnation? So we're putting that right in players' hands to make that choice. Well, I have to ask Sven, it's a question on a Jeez, lot of people's minds. Jeez, that's crazy. Mind. Can you talk to us about I wish I understood expected D &D. release time frames? So people have been waiting for it for a long time. Yeah. They're like gonna have to wait a little bit more uh, when it's ready. Uh, so uh, we don't, we, this is the game that we want to play, so we want to make sure it's really, yeah. really good. And then when, when that's the case, then we'll release it. Well, I know a lot of people have been waiting a long time. And I think I speak for a lot of people here when I say, take your time. If the Divinity thank Original you. Sin games are any indication of the quality, it's going to be fantastic and worth the wait. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me thank on stage. Very That's much. cool. Thank you. Ben and Mike talking about Baldur's Gate 3. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Why are they leaving? Well, it's because you can never the understand PC the dice gaming thing. show has D &D officially is... concluded. Oh, is this it? Bring up on the stage the fantastic Frankie Ward. Come here, Frankie. Hello. Well, 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 thank you so much, Sean. Hasn't this audience been absolutely fantastic today? Guys, thank you so much for coming out to the fifth annual PC Gaming Show. We want to give an enormous thanks to all of you who tuned in live. We want to, of course, thank all of you who personally showed up this morning, and of course, the sponsors who helped make this possible. Epic Game Store, iWin, Frontier, Funcom, Paradox, Interactive, Hovercast, Perfect World Rebellion, Tripwire, and Samsung. As you know, PC gaming Samsung. is a platform. It's not a That's true. They are producing, they were developing the sponsors are essential for letting us put on this Promoting show. Promoting their monitor. Thank you so much. And I got to ask, Frank, any titles you're excited about? Well, I do love a baby elephant. So definitely Planet Zoo. And slightly more awkwardly, then I also want to eat things. Maybe elephants oh, included. Yeah. So Maneater, of course. I'm personally looking forward to Songs of Conquest. And as you heard, there's mm. games coming out all across 2019 and into 2020. We hope you all have a fantastic E3. It officially begins tomorrow. Big I mean, what do we think, y'all? I wasn't. Again, drop frames. Good to see you two years in a row. Was it um? Fantastic time at E3 and go play some games. Wasn't as uh. See you next year. Bye bye bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Definitely had content more than I thought I would have expected personally. Um, I didn't stream it last year, I don't believe. But. I don't know. They had some really cool games that they showed there. Um, I think. Hmm. I don't think there was too much of something that I would necessarily buy, like day one purchase for me. I know that there are some people I know that I have like a lot of interest in some of those games. I think the ghost hunting one was probably one of my favorites. Like I think the ghost hunting one, like the prop hunt ghost hunt thing, that was cool. Um, I couldn't see myself going back and playing Man Eater a whole bunch, like over and over. But the ghost hunt one could be fun for stream. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the zoo one was really cute too, but again, like. I spend most of my free time streaming, and if not, like, I like to, like, 
competitively progress through things. So, yeah, the pro the ghost one seems like really fun. That could be good. Um. Well, I mean, what time do we have? We have ten minutes until Ubisoft. Is it on their Twitch channel? Oh god, they're playing Raymond. They're playing Raymond. That seems taunting. Like, here's Raymond, y'all. Here's Raymond. I know people want him for Smash really bad. It's at 4. Oh, it's 2.50, not 3.50. Okay, so I'll tell you what, y'all. I think this is what we're gonna do. I think we are going to take a brief intermission. I'm going to let you guys, like, do what you got to do. We'll come back in and out. We'll, we'll come back, yeah, about an hour. Probably, like, 3.45, 3.50-ish. Um, and then um, we'll resume stream. Because then when Ubisoft starts, we have Ubisoft and Square Enix. So, you know. Okay, these guys are annoying. I got to mute them. They're so loud in my ears. Yeah, everybody, please go eat. Go take a nap. Go do what you got to do. We will be back um, in about an hour. I'm going to go feed Tack. And then I'm also going to get some food myself and do some dishes. So I will see you guys in a little bit. I'm going to roll the credits. So if you see your name in the credits, thanks for making this daytime stream possible. Couldn't do it without you. You guys are beautiful and awesome. I love you. Um, and yeah, we'll be back in a little bit. Okie dokie. So if you see your name in the credits, give yourself a high five, a fist bump, kiss me too. And if you're new to the stream, welcome. We appreciate you being here. And uh, thanks for watching. And um, if you're lurking, thanks for lurking. I really appreciate it. So uh, yeah, we'll be back in about an hour. I'll talk to you then. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Stay awesome, stay beautiful, and stay savage, guys. I'll see you in a bit. Bye!